Did LSL actually make a distortion pedal that I'll like? Find out, join me on this week's episode. Have you ever looked at all the gear musicians use and wonder, how does it all work? My name's Dustin and my family and I are setting out on a quest to inspire both adult and kid musicians to create new sounds together and learn all about what it takes to produce great music. We'd like to invite you along on the journey as we explore the gear professional studios, musicians, and hobbyists use to create their art. We'll take a close-up look at the gear and ask, What's this button do? Hello and welcome to this week's episode of What's This Button Do? I'm your host, Dustin, and this week we are going to be continuing our series on the new LSL pedals. But this week I thought we would do something a little different. We're going to jump into the one pedal out of the group that I did not think that I would enjoy the Vital DS. That's right, a distortion pedal. And those who have been following the show know that I am not a gigantic fan of distortion pedals. It's very few and far between that I find one that I actually like. But the three band EQ on this and some of the little details that LSL put in have really intrigued me. So I've had about 30 minutes to warm up with this, check it out a little bit. So I thought we'll just jump over to the board, take a look at it. I'll walk you through all the features and let you hear some sound samples so you can see if you're impressed by it or not. So come join me over at the board. We'll take a look at it. All right, this week we are going to be using our trusty LSL Satikoi from last week. This is that crazy navy gray finish Satikoi with the humbucker and the bridge. Oh, it's just freaking nuts. And today we are going to be talking about the Vital DS. Now, many of you who have watched this channel before know I am not a giant fan of distortion pedals. It's hard for me to find one that I like. So of the four new pedals, this was the one that I thought, okay, I'm going to struggle with this one the most. It's... it is the least likely for me to buy out of the four new pedals. Um, so I wanted to really see what this thing can do. And uh, I do love an old like DS, uh, the old Boss DSs. They were fun, but I, it was one of the first pedals I ever had. Um, and they, they sound okay. Uh, there, there were good pedals and they're great starter distortion pedals. But again, it never really achieved what I wanted out of an amp. I, I could always push an amp better and create something. So today I thought what I would do is I'm just gonna give us a clean signal. <laughs> that you would hear out of any old basic Fender amp, nothing fancy. I'm tuned to drop D so I can get a little bit heavier chug when we try this out. We're just gonna test it out and see how it sounds. Um, I'll walk you through the paces kind of as I discover this. I haven't gotten a big chance to play with this either. Um, so I'm gonna let us kind of hear these sounds all together and we'll just see what happens. So um, I'm gonna turn the pedal on. First thing you're gonna notice here, It has a three band EQ on it, but the thing that impresses me is when I turn it on here, first thing I'm noticing is I'm not hearing a screech in my ear. Usually when I do this, my amp overloads and this room just gets so loud, I can actually still talk to you while the amp's on and all you're hearing is just a little bit of that amp noise in the background. You're not hearing the loud overbearing shrill shriek of a distortion pedal. So whatever they did in this to make that magic, I am so impressed with that right off the bat. So what you've got here is real simple controls. You've got a gain knob, you've got a volume knob, and then you've got a treble, mid, and bass EQ. The EQ on this is insane. This is not some simple just like, oh, tweak it just a little bit EQ. This thing is hardcore. So let's walk through that. I'm gonna turn the gain down just a little bit and the volume up. <laughs> Okay, that's a good volume level right there. And like, let's listen to that. Okay, distortion sound, right? But we're missing something there. It's not got the bite. It doesn't have the chug. It's not coming through the mix. So to do that, what we wanna do is increase the treble and maybe drop the bass in the mids a little bit so it's not getting so muddy. So let's bring up the treble a little bit. Listen to how much change there was between 1 and 2.30 on this. Let's go to 3 o'clock. 4. Ooh. 5. 6. I'm going to come back up to about 3.30. Let's try that. Now, let's... I don't want to go all metallic -y and scoop the mids completely out, but let's try that real quick just so you can hear what that what happens. All the way up. So you can hear 
the mid curve is not as heavy as the treble curve is, but let's take the mids all the way out for a second. <laughs> See, if you take it all the way out, you lose everything. I like to leave it a little bit in there. So let's go around nine or 10 o'clock. And then on the bass side, I'm gonna just. You can hear if I take it all the way down, you're. The boost side is nowhere near as effective as the or not effective, but affecting as dropping the bass all the way out. If you drop it all the way out, you really wash out your tone. Which for mixing could be a huge thing. If you've got some heavy bass parts, maybe a baritone playing along with you and you just want the, the guitar to cut through. Sometimes you do want to wash out the bass. I want to leave a little bass in here for what we're doing, so let's do that. That's actually pretty cool. Let's turn the volume up a little bit and give us a little more gain. A reminder of our original signal. Fender clean. No, I promised Johnny I wouldn't play Creed. Never mind, never mind. But listen to that. That was that Tremonti tone. That is really cool. That for some lead lines is cool. Let's try something else here with that same sound. Yeah, that really, for that kind of like metal high gain kind of feel to it, that is killer. Now, if we bring the distortion bound, bring the bass up a little bit, I bet you can still get some kind of rocky leads. <laughs> yeah, you can still get rocky with it too. You don't have to go too high. Bring that game back. Bring up our volume to compensate. Let's turn it way down on the gain. See what happens. Back to non. Yeah, I like that just as a good like leave drive. You don't have to get crazy distortion. And again, when I palm mute, listen to the lack of over gainy noise. Let's see how far we can crank it before we get that. I'm just gonna. I mean, I'm at full gain there. And we're still not blowing my ears out in the room here. I'm, I'm hoping this isn't overloading the microphone, but really I'm just so impressed. And it's not like a noise gate. It's not cutting off the noise where it's dead silent and feeling unnatural in any way in the breakup. It's just a good gate. <laughs> I think that is a really killer pedal. And I love this kind of low gain, but it's still, it's not low. Bring the mids up just. 
just a little bit trouble down. A little bit more trouble. Now let's try a little experiment where we bring the bass and the mids all the way down, turn up our gain just a little bit, see what happens here. <laughs> That, that's a really cool distortion pedal, but that EQ on there is so crazy and does so much in that spectrum. I think that's really what gives this an edge over all the other basic distortion pedals. Being able to dial that in and bring that treble out and keep it from getting too muddy, unless you really, really want it muddy, that, that makes this such a beautiful thing. And I gotta say, I'm impressed, um, especially rolling back that gain, well, well done, LSL, for a distortion pedal. I'm very impressed. All right, I know you guys might have noticed the change in outfit. This is actually uh, being cut in uh, from the next day after I filmed that demo. I was messing around downstairs um, and just kind of uh, changed the settings a little bit, and I ran the Claro Boost uh, from LSL in front of the Vital DS, and I wanted you to hear what that did to the sound. It just opened it up even more. Um, so I've got it down on my board right now. I'm gonna mix it in with the sound just so you guys can hear what that sounds like. So uh, here is our Vital DS. We've got it set up kind of like I was yesterday, but I've, I've maxed out the gain a little bit more. I brought the volume up, brought the gain quite a bit up. Um, I've still got the mids and the bass washed down a little bit. And now I've brought the treble up a little bit uh, to give us a little bit more treble in there. And this is currently what it sounds like. <laughs> What did you think? My first impressions on this are, I gotta say, you know I'm not a big fan of distortion pedals, but that was something impressive. The fact that I could get it to chug now, if, if you have the EQ set just right in the middle, um, not it's not my sound, like that, that kind of washed out real mid and, and bass heavy distortion, not my thing. I could see it if you're a doom metal player, maybe wanting a little bit more of that. I like my trebles to cut through the mix more, but the fact that that pedal gives you a treble, a mid, and a bass EQ built in that really does function and really does truly change the tone of the pedal, makes it so versatile and so much more functional than just a basic DS pedal. I'm really, really impressed with that. And I think a lot of different genres of music will be able to embrace this pedal and understand it really quickly. Um, I really think that by adding maybe even the Claro boost afterwards to push it a little bit further, or maybe uh, an EQ to even take that treble even more and push it a little bit more and have it cut through the mix, especially 
if you've got a real deep bassy mix already um i think uh mixing it with some other pedals uh, maybe even a tube screen will be interesting we're going to play around with some different settings with it later on um, but i think this uh pedal could combine with a lot of other pedals to make some really really killer sounds as well but on its own just as a standalone distortion pedal Man, I am, I'm impressed. I don't know if you caught it, but when I was playing some of those kind of toolish riffs and some of the chugging riffs, the compression that happens there, for me, having the amp set at just a low gain fender setting, usually you don't get that compression when you when you chug. You don't get the, the sound kind of going, like sort of sucking in for a second that you normally would get on a high gain amp that's pushed to its limits. What this distortion pedal really emulated there was that sound. It gave you that amp compressing on itself every time you chugged. And that is something you don't see in a lot of distortion pedals. So that part alone, I think I'm sold on this to be a functional distortion pedal, especially if you're in a band, maybe you're in a wedding band or a cover band where you're not doing a lot of metal songs. Um, but every now and then you need to get that high gain or maybe you need to get that chug in there, but it's not your main sound. It's not your core sound. This would be such an easy pedal to throw on your board. It's not going to take up a lot of space, but it will give you all that. So you don't have to lug around another amp or, or, a you know, neural or something to have to turn on to try and get your high gain sounds. You can get most of that out of this and it's going to sound great. I mean, you could hear the Tremonti tones, the tool tones, all of that's there. There's a lot of that sound in this box and, uh, for as inexpensive as this pedal is, that's just a no-brainer for me. I think this is definitely going to be one of my toolkit distortion pedals. Yeah, I was very, very impressed with it. So once again, LSL, very, very impressive. Uh, so next week, I think we will take a look at their take on kind of the Klon circuit, the Lucid Overdrive. Um, we're going to mess around with that a little bit and see uh, what we think of that because you know me, I love a good Klon drive. So this will be really interesting to see how it compares to some of the other Klons that we've shot out on this show before. So Please join me next week. Take a look at that. Comment down below. If you've had a chance to experiment with some of these LSL pedals, please let us know down here. If not, reach out. Um, my friends at Palin Music, I know, have just got these in stock. So um, if you need to find a, a set of these pedals, please reach out to them. I'll put their link down here at the bottom. Um, they are available now. And I got to say, so far, very, very impressed. Two down, two to go. So over the next couple of weeks, we'll be checking those out and see how they go. And as always, if you get a chance, please visit me over on Instagram. If you if you use Instagram, um, my handle is what's this button do Dustin. Please give me a like and a follow there. I'll be uh, posting some experimental things up with these pedals, doing a little shootout, maybe mixing them with some other pedals just to see how they play along. So we'll have all sorts of fun content like that coming over the winter. Uh, so please join us over there. And as always, thank you so much for spending your time with us this week. We really appreciate it. I can't wait to see you next week to take a look at the Lucid. So please join us then and have a wonderful week. We'll see you soon. Take care.